Yeah, had lots and lots of requests um, on this topic. So I'll, I'll take a bit of a deeper dive into this. We spoke about this briefly a little bit on one of the cleat position videos we did ages ago, but we'll talk specifically about Q factor now, just the, the how far apart your feet are. There's Look, there's a lot of interchangeable terms here and, and I'll probably interchange them myself. Stance width is one that some people prefer using. Q factor, um, for all intents and purposes, what we're talking about here is how far apart a rider's feet are. The term Q factor technically refers to how far apart the two crank faces are, um, but we'll, we'll just talk about it in terms of how far apart your feet are and, and what we can do to change it. So technically the term comes, it's sort of a bastardization of the term Q angles, I believe, which is an orthopedic term used in, in, in medicine to, to determine the angles of, of people's knees. So a, a zero degree Q angle is where the line between the femur and the tibia is perfectly straight. And then you can have a positive Q or a negative Q, which basically means you've got knock knees or bow legs, right? And it's and you can see how that, that term kind of flowed over into cycling with relationship to how far apart your feet are on the bike. Um, look, it's around 150 mil for road bikes and about 170 for mountain bikes. There's some variation in bottom bracket standards and crank arm shapes and all that kind of stuff, but it's a pretty narrow band and we're talking fairly specifically about road bikes. So we'll stick with that, that 150 mil between the two crank faces. And yeah, I know it goes up and down a bit. It depends how far you thread the, the bearing shells into the frame and what curvature and shape the um, the crank faces have and how many washers you use under the pedal and all this kind of stuff. So given the five millimeters of sideways cleat adjustment that's available in a, in a, a three bolt pedal system like a, a Look or a Shimano one and the six millimeters which is available in, in a Speedplay one, you can't really vary Q factor a lot just straight out of the box without doing some funky aftermarket stuff which we'll talk to you about in a minute. Which is kind of annoying because, you know, people with really wide pelvises, narrow pelvises, lack of internal rotation in their hips, you know, all this kind of stuff, hip impingement. These are the primary drivers of Q factor oddities. And, and these are quite common. Like a huge number of my clients, I change their Q factor outside of what's sort of available in terms of the standard stuff on a bike. And these are some of the ways that we can do it. You know, your Asiomas here have got uh, the first generation of these at a slightly wider Q factor, I believe, um, straight off the bat and a slightly higher stack height. But I think in the second or third generation, they've, they've fixed that. So now these are apparently the same as a, a Kio. Um, we've got a couple of different pedal extenders. These suckers here, these thread into the crank face. There's a left and a right one, and then the pedal threads into there, and they will move your feet apart by 20 millimeters, or if you really want to go crazy, 27s. These are custom ones which I get made up by a machinist overseas in big bulk lots. They're not overly expensive, a little bit heavy, um, and unfortunately a little bit dangerous with carbon cranks and that kind of stuff if you've got a really powerful rider because they do increase the leverage on the crank. So technically speaking, you should really use these on aluminium cranks only and nice strong ones if possible. You've got a standard speed play spindle length here, which is one of yours, um, and then I actually use some custom shorter ones. You can see how much shorter that one is there on, on my right, your left. Mm. And um, these are to get my feet closer together. So there's very few options for getting people's feet closer together. There's quite a lot for getting them further apart. In addition, a couple of manufacturers, Speedplay, um, the, old, the old Speedplays before the, they switched over to, to Wahoo now, you could very easily remove the axle and replace them with custom length ones to go wider as well. And, and Speedplay offered them in wider lengths. Um, and you could also get custom aftermarket ones, titanium ones like this in wider, wider sizes as well. So, so, so what impact was it having to you before you changed to a smaller... Yeah, so for me, this was this kind of leads is a good question. This leads into the next because that's a very rare thing to do. Yes. Yeah, I I reckon I've given these out to like ten people ever. Whereas longer than standard speed play spindles, I go through I go through probably two or three sets a month. You know, they're quite common to give out. So we'll, we'll go into first. How do you need, how do you know if you need to go wider? Because okay. this is the majority of people that are looking at this video. If they have a problem with their Q factor, it's highly likely that it's too narrow, right? So 
if you, how do you need to go wider? There's a couple of kind of physical giveaways. One, if you're just a big guy or a big lady, your big wide pelvis, you got like a, a 36 inch waist or something like that. You're big, you're solidly built. You know, you, you've got a lot of muscle on you in particular. You're not the most flexible person around the hips. These are all, you know, you start to think, well, maybe a standard road bike Q factor might be a little bit narrow for me. In addition, if you walk with both feet turned out, you know, clients always say to me that, that they that I watch them walk as part of the fitting process and they say, oh, I walk like a duck and I go, ah, oh, you know, with the feet externally rotated with the heels in. If you walk that way to quite a strong extent, there's a good chance that when you, when you look down at your feet when you're riding, your feet will also gravitate towards a heel in range because your hip is, has evolved itself to operate in that range of motion, that rotatory range. Those people very often benefit from moving their feet further apart because when the feet are externally rotated on the pedals, it artificially narrows the cue factor that their knees and hips see further up the chain. It, it sucks everything in towards the frame artificially. So they often need to go wider, not only just to clear their heels from the back of the bike and the crank faces, but also to kind of to kind of reset the cue factor just to something more or less normal so that their knees are, uh, are not you know, being forced into brushing the top tube. If you've got less than about 10 degrees of internal rotation, we'll get some footage of this cam, um, but you know, you've, you've got hardly any internal rotation in your hips. There's a, there's a good chance, um, it's not a 100% rule, but there's a good chance that as your hips rise at the top of the stroke, your knee will want to kick out to the side on both hips, sometimes just one if you've just got one-sided hip impingement. Um, but hip impingement is a good reason to think about going wider as well. And so if you've got less than 10 degrees of internal rotation range when your hip is flexed up at 90 degrees, you might think about going wider. If you take some footage of yourself on a trainer and it, from the front when you're pedaling and it shows both of your knees tracking wide of the line of the pedal. So the pedal is going round and round like this and your knees are doing this in an oblique plane chopping in from outside the line of the pedal. You might want to think about going wider because that is, you know, verticality of knee tracking over the center of the pedal is generally speaking a good thing. And if your knees are trying to dive in from outside the line of the pedal, um, one of the strong, that's it was one of the very strong indicators that you might want to go with a wider Q factor just to pull your foot out underneath your knee so you can push down on the pedal. And more not, power. More power and yes. less, less <laughs> knee pain, mate. Yeah. More power is more important. More power right? is, it is. <laughs> It is more important, yeah. It's almost as important as slamming your stem. Uh, <laughs> um, one of the oddball ones, which I get questions about um, internationally all the time, I get people emailing me about this one. They've had 15 different bike fits and they can't solve it. If you're getting bilateral cramping in your VMOs, your medial quadriceps or your adductors, there's a good chance that your Q factor is too narrow. And the quads, the intersection of the quad in the VMO here is struggling to control the verticality of the tracking of the knees. They're trying to track outside the line of the pedal, but their quads are so powerful that they're bringing the knee in and, and, and the adductors are working so well that they're maintaining the verticality of the knee tracking. And that person is just compensating too well for their Q factor being too narrow at a cost of excessive muscular load in those muscles. So if you get that one, it's a good reason to think about trying to go wider. And the last, the last one here is how do you know if you need to go narrower? Look, it's very, very rare. If you're an incre this, and this is all the exact opposite things of why you would want to go narrower. Extremely narrow hipped riders, such as myself, who walk with their feet very straight or internally rotated. If you're almost a little bit pigeon-toed when you walk, if you've got huge amounts of internal hip rotation like I do, more than sort of 20 or 30 degrees, if your knees just about brush the top tube, even though you're quite lightly built, you might wanna think about going narrower. If footage from the front shows both of your knees tracking well inside the line of the pedal, so the pedal's going around like this and your knee is actually, you know, not, not just over the center of the pedal, but both knees are tracking inside the line and almost touching the top tube, you might want to think about going narrower. And bear in mind, you can't go much narrower before you hit, hit, before your foot hits the crank. Mm. And that's what limits me. Um, I, can, I can only go about four millimeters narrower than a standard Q factor anyway because my foot hits the crank. Mm. So you're kind of limited by the, uh, you know, the limitations of the, the physical nature of the machine. And if both, both of your feet gravitate towards a toe-in position on the bike, you might want to think about going narrower. That is often a subconscious attempt by the rider to bring their feet closer together. 
So many years ago, I noticed that I was like this and I thought, well, I've never, because I can only get three or four millimeters narrower before my hit before my foot hits the crank. I thought, well, I'll give it a go. So I, I from my, my distributor who makes the spindles for me, I got some custom shorter ones made and it was just a huge improvement. Even just that three millimeters for me on each, three or four on each foot made me feel so much more comfortable, improve my symmetry. I get better hamstring and glute engagement. All of the things that happen when the Q factors improve for that person happened to me by, by going narrower, but I'm an outlier. There's the people that are watching this, if you need to change your Q factor substantially, there's a good chance that you'll need to go wider because you're a big, solidly built, relatively inflexible person, or you've got a bit of serious sort of hip impingement, that type of stuff. And um, look, it is important to note, it's, it's uncommon. People will say, how do I know if my Q factor is too wide? If I you know, go to a set of these and they're too wide, it's uncommon to get bad symptoms from it being slightly too wide. But if it's too narrow, you will, you'll probably get some sort of problem from it. There's another, I forgot to mention this earlier, there is another pedal system. There's, there's a few of these around globally, which is made by SQ Labs, the guys who make oh, yeah. your saddle that's on the wind space there. They also make a, a, an eight millimeter longer axled Keo compatible pedal. So it's it uses a uh, an aftermarket cleat, but it's compatible with Keos, and that's got an eight mil longer spindle. So if you don't want to make the jump from standard to twenty mil because it's too big, something like that is one of the only options. And for the US based viewers, there's another company called uh, Issi Isi I double S I. Yep. Never know how to pronounce that one. Okay. They make them in plus fives as well, and there may be more out there that I don't know about. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So we're a bit bit limited with um, the jump between standard and plus 20. You know, if mm. you only need 10 millimetres on each side, you're often looking at a new set of pedals. And Shimano makes a plus 4 millimetre axle for their Altegra and Dura-Ace ones as well. Um, but again, it's not much variation. Four mils on each side is not a lot. It's surprisingly common to need 20. Mm. Okay.